Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, as promised, a drill press modification. One of the things I have always disliked on all drill presses that I've ever seen is the fact that they have their height adjustment at the back, right at the column. And it drives me absolutely nuts because it is so inaccessible and so difficult to get at. For me anyway, to have to reach underneath there, on, especially after adding an auxiliary table like we did last week, it is just a nightmare. So what are we gonna do today? on our drill press modification, we're gonna relocate those controls to the front of our drill press table. Well, the very first thing that you want to do in order to start this process is loosen up your handle here. I've already done this ahead of time and remove it from the shaft. Once you get it removed, you're gonna to wanna to take measurements of the diameter of the shaft of your drill press just so you know what you're dealing with here. And for me, the shaft is 9 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Well, now that you know the diameter of the shaft of your drill press for the handle, you're going to need some material. And what I've got here is a 9 sixteenths diameter steel bar. I've also got a set of bevel gears that I purchased online and I have some 9 16 diameter shaft collars. Now truth be told I ordered these bevel gears off of Amazon and I couldn't get the exact size that I needed so I got the closest metric equivalent and then filed out the interior of the hub here so that it would fit the 9 16 diameter bar. So where do we start with all this? Well, I think what we need to start with is some measurements. Well, it's extremely awkward to work under here. It's even more awkward to film, so bear with me. But the first dimension that we need is from the bottom surface of our drill press table here to the center of our shaft. Now, this measurement is constant. It never changes. So an easy way to get that measurement is to place a square on the bottom of your table and then you'll have a reference point to hold a, a ruler in order to get that measurement. And for my case, it looks like it's going to be 2 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. So we will write that down and that will be our first measurement, 2 and 13 sixteenths. Well, we need to make some brackets that are going to house our steel shaft, which, of course, will allow us to alter the height of our drill press table. And for the front support of that steel rod, we're going to be using 3 quarter of an inch ply, single layer thick, but on the back section where there is all of the workings of the gears and that sort of thing, I want it a little thicker for a little better support. So I have some pieces here that are three and three quarter inches wide. They're roughly 11 inches long. We may adjust that as we go, but the first thing we're gonna do is apply some wood glue and laminate them together to give us an inch and a half thickness. Well, while we're waiting for that ply to dry up, I just want to explain about these bevel gears. And if you don't know what they're for, what they do is they change the mechanical operation 90 degrees. And the way that they do that is just like this. If this is the shaft of your drill press that turns horizontally, they now allow you to turn them vertically and you can see how that would work there. It's a little difficult to hold it in place and show you, but it's important that you take careful measurements in order to get these gears to mesh correctly. So the next thing that we need to do is take one of our gears and mount it onto the shaft where our handle used to be 
for the crank of our drill press raising. And once you get your gear on, you just want to ensure that everything still moves smoothly. I put this one on a little too close to the mechanism here at first and bound it up so that the table could not raise or lower. So once you're happy with that, just give it one last little torque to make sure that it's nice and tight on there and then we can move on. I now want to take our 9 16 diameter rod and our mating bevel gear. I want to slide it on to our shaft, set it in place where I want it, and I'm just going to use a marker to mark the back edge of it. And the reason for that is I want to grind a flat platform here so that the Allen key set screw will have something to bite into. So for that, I'm gonna clamp this up and I'm gonna use an angle grinder and just take this down just a touch. Well, it's not a huge flat spot, but it is enough to give us something for that Allen key bolt to bite into here so that we get a nice solid mating piece so that it's not going to rotate. So just temporarily now we're going to tighten our bevel gear onto our rod. Now be careful as it may be hot. This is a little warm to the touch for me but it'll cool down. Just be careful you don't burn yourself. And there we go. There's the there's the bevel gear now installed on our shaft. So now that we have that mounted on there, we can go over to our glued up assembly. Well, here is our glued up assembly and I've just trimmed it so that it's square. The dimensions are not crucial at this point in time, but if you're interested, it's just over 11 inches long and I cut it to three and a half inches wide. Well, if you remember, we measured down very carefully to get that measurement to the center of our shaft. And for us, that was 2 and 13 sixteenths. Now, truth be told, I actually adjusted it a little more. And although it sounds crazy, it's actually 2 and 27 30 seconds. So that is where I'm going to mark it here on our piece at two inches and 27 30 seconds right there and that represents the center of our shaft from our drill press so what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend that line along i'm going to take it over and verify the measurements and if the measurements are true i'm going to drill a through hole here that is five eighths of an inch in diameter. Well, hopefully this will make sense to you, but what I've done is with that bevel gear in our laminated piece, I've lined it up with the gear that we attached to the drill press shaft and I marked this laminated piece roughly at the edge of the table and then cut it off. I now have a 24 inch long piece, three and three quarters of an inch wide. It's single three quarter inch ply. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer the center mark now of my um, five eighths diameter hole to that piece of plywood. And at the same dimension down from the top, that two and 27, 30 seconds, we are going to drill another five eighths through hole. Well, if you can get a second set of hands to help you with this, by all means do, because it's extremely awkward. But what I have is 
I have our front piece of single layer ply that was three and three quarter that we just drilled. I've got that clamped very carefully to the front. It's just loosely set there. And then I have slid our shaft through here and the shaft has two 9 16 shaft colors on it. And then I have our double piece of ply. And what we want to do, and I'm gonna give you a better view of this in just a second, is we want to line these gears up so that they mesh correctly. And once we have them nicely meshed there, then we're going to clamp this board in place. We're going to try to clamp it as squarely as we can. And I know it's hard to see at the moment, but bear with me. We'll just clamp it on there, get a square on it and make sure that it is square to your entire assembly. The square is a little too long, so I'll just grab another one and we'll just check it for square. That's not too bad right there. And we're gonna clamp it in place as best we can. And then we're gonna try our mechanism to see if it works. Now, just before you test the operation, you wanna slide your shaft collars tight up against your plywood and just give them a little tighten. This'll keep your shaft from sliding in and out and help to keep everything aligned. With the shaft collars and the bevel gear in place, this shaft here should not move. We should be pretty good here, but if you rotate it, you should be able to raise and lower your drill press table. So this here, this seems a little tight to me. So I'm gonna make some adjustments to make sure that the bevel gears are meshing properly. But once I get them meshed properly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my original crank off my drill press and we will take a measurement for the distance that we need here. We'll cut this rod off so that we're able to mount our crank on this. And just like we did on the opposite side of the shaft, I'll use my angle grinder and grind a flat surface in order to give something for this Allen screw to bite into. And once you're happy with the operation, just mark the position of your boards. I've removed the drill press table from the drill press and you can see where I have softened the edges just by putting a 45 chamfer on each one. Put that one aside, you can see our double thickness. Again, just basically cleaned it up, make it a little prettier, you know. I've also cut a couple of angle brackets and that will help our front support piece to stay square to our body and also it'll help it to stay stable so that it's not wobbling back and forth. So at this point, it is nothing more than following your markings that you've laid out after carefully testing all of this and clamping all of these pieces into place. You just wanna be sure that everything is square, everything lines up, and that your rod, once it's in, placed in, is running square to your table so that it doesn't bind your gears. And get your clamps on that as best you can and leave it overnight to dry. Well, here we are the next day after leaving this overnight, and we're just going to go around the entire assembly, give it a sanding, clean up any of the rough edges that we may have uh, not gotten on one of our other sanding episodes. And uh, we're going to drop this onto the drill press, and there's really not much more to do at this point other than assemble it. Well, the first thing to do is to slide your rod in place. And you don't want to forget your 9 16 shaft collars. So slide them on in there and just get it lined up into both of your support uprights. Well, the next thing that you want to do, and it can be a little finicky, so just take your time, 
is we want to line up our bevel gear. So we're going to line it up with our pieces. We're going to get our bar in place. There we go. Just like that. And make sure that you line up your flat spot. And once you get it all aligned and you're happy with the way everything fits, tighten down the Allen key that sets this gear in place. Now, as soon as you're happy with the alignment of your bevel gears, take your back collar and tighten it down onto the shaft so that the gear can't slide any further from where it is. It'll sort of lock it in place. And then once you get this one locked in place, take your second bevel gear or your second shaft collar, slide it to the front of your assembly and tighten that one down tight to the wood as well. And then here at the front of the drill press, we just want to install our stock crank. And it may take a little bit of finagling, but don't forget to line up the flat part of your shaft so that your set screw will have something to bite into. And the only thing really left to do here at this point is to test the operation. I have applied a little bit of grease to those bevel gears to keep everything moving smoothly and to avoid that metal on metal grinding in case there is any. But we can see here that it's a very smooth action. The table does go side to side, but of course it does. It hasn't been tightened down. But, oh my goodness, what a huge difference as opposed to having to go to the back of the table and try to raise or lower this. Love it. And there you have it. A drill press modification moving the raising and lowering controls from the back of the drill press to the front. So, quick recap. Think about this process here now. Cut a few pieces of plywood, cut some 916 rod, use a few 916 shaft collars, a couple of bevel gears off Amazon and your existing shop handle. And within a day, it was one day in the shop of modification and I end up with something that is so spectacular, it's not even funny. How many times have I cracked my knuckles off the top of a drill press table to try to raise or lower it because of this foolish at the column control? It, it doesn't make any sense to have it back there and have a drill press table in a woodworking shop. If it was just a stock uh, drill press table that was there and that's all that re you were using, that's no big deal because it's not big enough or cumbersome enough that it gets in the way. But as soon as you add that larger table to give you the more working room with the hold downs and all that jazz, you know what? It makes that thing so inaccessible, it's not even funny. So it just makes common sense to move it. I got the bevel gears off Amazon, shipping and everything for something like $16. The metal shaft, I used about two and a half dollars worth of that. The collars were three bucks a piece. And I already had the gear or the, uh, the handle. So what did it really cost me? Guys, it was less than 20 bucks all in all sort of thing. You know, actually, that's not true. It was less than 30, but even still, if it was 50, I would still pay it because this is awesome. Guys, quit goofing around. Stop messing with these controls at the back and bending and we're not getting any younger, man. We're falling apart. Fix your drill press and put those controls to the front. It's an awesome modification and I hope you're gonna try it. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss a single episode of the show. I really want to thank you for tuning in, guys. It really means a lot to me. What more can I say other than I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.